you find yourself frustrated because you just can't seem to find a sustainable way to predict the direction that stocks are likely to move? I'm Seth Freuberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan, and the traders here on our desk have found a solution to that problem by trading option strategies where you can make money trading options without having to predict the direction of the market. In this video, we'll be covering the details of a strategy known as the calendar spread, where you're actually going to make the most money when a stock or index doesn't move, meaning you don't have to predict the stock or index's direction at all to make a potentially amazing profit. So that, if that's of interest to you, then stick around so that you can learn how this strategy works and why. I think you're going to find this interesting. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so most traders really struggle with being able to consistently pick the direction of a stock or an index. There's so many factors that can affect the moves that take place in the market that it can be overwhelming to some traders to develop consistency picking direction. And that's exactly why some traders gravitate towards what are known as market neutral options trades, because there actually are a large number of ways to make money trading options on stocks or index without having to predict direction at all. You just need to know how to structure the trade and if things go well you can make money very quickly in a market which is barely moving at all. And I'm about to show you a pretty dramatic example of this using index options but I want to make sure that everyone watching this video has a good handle on how index options work. So we're going to do a really quick review of how they work and for those of you familiar with how index options work just hang in there. This is going to be really quick and then we'll jump right back into teaching you how to trade calendar spreads, which is going to be pretty eye-opening. All right, the best way to understand index options is to think of them as bets. What are known as call options pay off if an index closes above what's known as the strike price of the option on the day that that option expires. If the index does close above that price on expiration day, then the call buyer gets $100 per point that the market closes above that call's strike price. A put option is the exact opposite. It pays off if the market closes below the strike price of the put option. Again, $100 per point that the market closes below the strike price of the put. So for example, if an index closes at 4032, then the 4,000 call would pay $3,200, as you can see from the calculation, because the index closed 32 points above the strike price of the call, which is 4,000. However, the 4075 call would expire worthless as the index didn't close above 4075, so the call seller just pockets the premium. And the puts are just the opposite. If the market closed at 4032, then the 4075 put would be worth $4,300 because the market closed 43 points below the put strike price of 4075, but the 4,000 puts, they would expire worthless because the market didn't close below the 4,000 strike price. Okay, so now with that as background, let's go back a few weeks to May 14th and we'll see that the S&P 500 index, which is the trading symbol SPX, had opened up at about 4150, hovering near its all-time highs, where it's been sitting for over a month at that point. And so it would not be unreasonable to believe that the market might just continue to chop around inside a pretty small range for a while. And so if that was your viewpoint, that in the short term, the market may not really have much of a direction at all, then you could enter into a market neutral trade such as the calendar spread. And in this example, we would do that by selling the 4150 call expiring on May 21st, about a week later, pretty much right where the market is trading that morning, and then turning right around and buying a 4150 call right at the same strike, but expiring about three weeks out on June 4th. And so this combination of selling an option at one strike and then buying one in a later expiration at that exact same strike, that structure is what is known as a calendar spread to options traders. 
But before we move on, if you want to learn three option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, or the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index even if you're outright wrong on the direction, then click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free workshop registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com. Believe me, you don't want to miss this, so pause this video, sign up now, and then resume watching. Okay, so now let's first break down the cash flow so that you can fully understand the details of this trade and more importantly, why it works. So we'll start with the option that we buy that expires on June 4th. And as you can see, the, that costs $60.45, but don't forget that each call option pays off $100 per point above its strike price. So you multiply that by $100 and we bought three of them. So when we multiply it all together, we get a total cost of $18,135. However, at the same time that we did that, we sold three of those 4150 calls expiring on May 21st. And for that, we received, as you can see from the calculation, a total of $10,242. And your broker will allow you to do this simultaneously. And so the net cost of the initial trade is $7,893, as you can see from the calculation, which also serves as your initial capital on the trade. Now, the first issue I'd like you to focus on is the fact that the market is trading just under $41.50. So if the options expired immediately, they'd have no value because they only pay off if the market is above the strike price of a call. But nonetheless, we have to pay a price of $60.45 for those options. And that's because of the potential that the SPX will make a big move between now and June 4th, in which case the person who sold us these calls would have had to pay a very large amount of money to satisfy his obligation under those calls. But the calls which expire only one week later on May 21st, those only have a value of 34.14, even though they're at the same strike. Why? Because there's way less time, only a week, for the 4150 calls to gain value, while the June 4 calls at that same strike price have two more weeks to gain that value. And so the risk goes on much longer and the market can move much farther in three weeks than it can in one, obviously. And so the guy selling that call has to collect more premium to take that risk than if he only was exposed to a week of potential rallies. And so keep that in mind as we proceed to see what happens as we analyze the outcome of this trade. Okay, so the option that we sold that May 21st 4150 call is actually valued on the opening bell on the morning of May 21st. And so that option actually stops trading the afternoon before on May 20th. So if we move to that date at around 11.15 a.m., we'll notice that the SPX index just happens to be trading almost exactly where it was the week before when we first put the trade on. And this example was picked intentionally so that we could have a clean apple for apples comparison for you to learn from. Now, what I want you to focus on is the relative price of the short option that expires on May 21st versus the one that expires two weeks later on June 4th. You'll remember we sold the May 21 calls for 34.02 and with only about five hours to go before that option expires, it's now worth $13.30, a reduction in value of more than 20 points, which is good for us because we're short those options. Whereas the long options at the same strike price a week later lost less than nine points of their value, dropping from 60.51 to 51.66. So, and this is the key point in the whole video, so listen up. At the same strike price and the same index price, options that expire farther out in time lose their value much more slowly than options that expire much earlier. Why? Well, that's simple. In this case, for example, the short option only has about five hours to go before it stops trading. So the market's likely move in five hours is way less than the market's potential move over the next two weeks. And so naturally, the risk to the seller of those calls is way more two weeks out 
than it is five hours out. And so the options prices are naturally much lower. And so that's why calendar spreads work because of the relative rate of depreciation of shorter dated short options compared to the longer dated long options at the same strike price. So now let's look at the practical impact of this. So let's say at this point that we decide to take the trade off and buy back the short option and sell off that long option. Let's look at the math of that. And as you can see, selling off that long call at the reduced yet still significant price of 5166 brings in $15,498 while buying back to close that short May 21st 4150 call costs quite a bit less, only 3990 and of course you have to deduct the original cost of the calendar to arrive at a net positive cash flow from the whole trade of $3,615, which constitutes a profit of more than 45% in under a week. And all of that took place purely because the SPX index ended up at around the same price as it was when we first entered the trade. And that relative time decay of the shorts and the longs did the rest, returning us 45% simply because of the passage of time. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is the fact that to make money trading options, the market doesn't have to move at all. You simply have to use the relative time decay of long and short options to your advantage, which you can easily do through the use of the calendar spread once you become proficient in options income trading. Now, just to remind you, if you're serious about your trading, you need to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running, where you'll learn three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen, or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free workshop directly. It really is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it.